and honor to stand before you today. To Reverend Cornelius, Sister Wanda, Sister Pat, and the lay organization, thank you for the invitation. I greet you all in the mighty and matchless name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I would like to thank my pastor, Reverend Charles Norris of St. James, in his absence for allowing me to say yes to this opportunity to be here. Amen. I would like to acknowledge my family. They stood during the, um, the visitors, but my parents, Mr. Williams, are here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's the main thing, because my dad's been sick and he hasn't been to church for months, but he felt well enough to be here. Okay. Yeah. And to my St. James family, who are always here to support me. Amen. All right, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are wonderful and awesome and worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. Your greatness is inconceivable. Your love is unconditional. And your power is unbeatable. You are great and greatly to be praised. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for your honor of allowing us to see another day. It is not by chance that you have us here in this place at this time. Please bless the word that has been prepared for this moment. Dear Lord, remove Pam from this place and you take over. Allow every word to be from you and please make the people receptive to your word. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. And I ask you all to pray for me. Every time I have to get up and speak somewhere, my voice wants to play hide and seek. <laughs> I would like to use as a subject this morning, do you have your equipment? Our lay day theme today is Laity Standing on the Battlefield for the Lord Through Power and Praise. My aim is to break this down into sections and hopefully make it make some sense to you by the end. Laity Standing on the Battlefield for the Lord. What battlefield are we on and why are we fighting? If we look at him, number 390, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord, it depicts the battlefield as leaving familiar people in places, joining like-minded people, and going out to win souls for Christ. Then, eventually winning our soul's place around God's throne of grace, having served God from the time of our calling until death. Yes, we do all have a calling, and we have been directed to go and make disciples in whatever form that might be. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, yeah. baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, yeah. and teaching to them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Mm -hmm. And although our, that popular hymn, I'm on the battlefield for the Lord, makes it seem like starting out and finishing was as simple as crying, sinner come to God, this journey is nowhere near simple. As Christians, we are in a constant battle with spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare consists of threats to us that are unseen spiritual forces of evil. Spiritual warfare is the battle between what is good and right versus what is evil. Ephesians 6.12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. These verses of scripture tell us the same thing. Evil is out there lurking, yeah. waiting to devour us, yeah. to turn us away from God. Yeah. Our theme suggests that if we're going to stand on the battlefield for the Lord, we need to have power and praise. Yeah. I'm going to go one step further and say that we need to have powerful praise, powerful prayer, 
praise, and thanksgiving. Although our theme scripture is Psalm 104 and 5, I'm going to use the entire Psalm 100, which reads, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good and his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. So what does it mean to have powerful prayer, praise, and thanksgiving as we stand on the battlefield for the Lord? Let's start with the powerful prayer. Prayer is defined as a personal communication or petition addressed to God. Power is defined as the ability to do or act, capability of doing or accomplishing something. Powerful prayer means that when you communicate with God, something happens somewhere. All right, all right, all right. I heard someone say once that the power in prayer is not in the prayer, the power in prayer is in God. All right, all right, all right. Things, things happen when we pray that do not happen when we don't pray. When you pray consistently, you develop a relationship with God. You become unafraid of speaking with him. You learn that you can always say whatever you feel. How many people can you honestly talk to and say whatever you feel and not have to worry about attitudes, feelings, or judgment. Not many that I can think of. When you pray consistently, you learn how to listen and understand when God speaks to you. Another part of the power of prayer is receiving what we ask in God's will. And when God delivers, it is better than anything we could have ever done. Yes. It is beyond our expectations what God has for us. First Thessalonians 5.17 says to pray continually or pray without ceasing. Ephesians 6.18 says to always keep on praying. We should have a constant attitude of prayer. We should pray when we are filling up give thanks to God for our blessings. We should pray when we are feeling down, continue to give thanks to God and ask God to fix what it is that is doubting us. We should pray when we are afraid or in trouble. We need to make, a, make prayer a part of our daily lives. It should be natural conversation with God throughout our day. Luke 18, 1 says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. In order to gain the power in, that results from our prayers, you have to be willing to put yourself fully in God's hands. Yellow. You must have faith that God has the situation, whatever the battle may be. Okay. Your faith has to be strong enough to submit completely to God's will for your life, and you must be willing to follow his guidance. It's never too late to start praying. No matter where you are in life, where you are in your situation, where you are in your relationship, where you are in your career, where you are in your circumstances, you can always pray. Nothing you have done is too bad for God to meet you once you open yourself up to Him. Get into the habit of praying just to say thank you to God. Don't always wait until you need God to help you out of a situation or for a problem to start praying. And it's okay to not know what, what to say when you pray. Just start uttering and God will interpret what you need. You're talking to God. He already knows what you need. He's waiting for you to realize that you need something and that he can provide it. When you pray, it shows God that you trust him with your life. When we pray, we need to be sincere. God expects, expects us to talk to him, and he wants us to do it earnestly. He already knows what we're thinking before we express it, so be honest in your conversations with God. Respectfully tell him how you feel, ask him what it is you need for him, and seek his will in your life. 
Always remember that God's will is not always what we want or ask for, but it should always be what we see. Yeah, yeah. Once we establish our prayer line with God, standing on the battlefield, fighting the spiritual warfare of evil becomes a little more bearable. Knowing that we can tell God how we feel, our every thought, and, and know that God cares for us and will help us through gives us the power to keep fighting. As long as we keep fighting, we will come through victorious. Yeah. How do I know this? Yeah. Because I jumped ahead, read the end, to the end of the book, and guess what? Jesus wins. All right. All right. On the third day, Jesus got up with all power in his hands, conquered death and sin, and now sits at the right hand of God, awaiting the day he is to come back and get those of us who kept fighting, all right. who kept standing and did not give up. Now let us look at thanksgiving and praise. We should be thankful because God is worthy of our thanksgiving. Yes, when we are thankful, our focus moves off selfish desires and off the pain of current situations. Expressing thankfulness helps us to remember that God is in control. Despite the many struggles and setbacks in this life, we have to express thanksgiving by continually turning our gazes toward God's goodness and faithfulness. God's love is timeless. It endures forever. And gratitude is not just an individual experience, but collective invitation from God for all generations. Here, gratitude is the ability to remember, to savor, and to cherish the beauty of God's blessings and the goodness of God's character in our lives and communities. It is a way of living that always assumes there is something to be thankful for, despite life's battles. Yeah. Psalm 104 reads, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Praise is defined as the act of expressing approval, admiration, or commendation, the offering of grateful homage in words or song, and an act of worship. Our abiding, intimate knowledge of God enables us to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of Christ, the will of God in Christ for you. Along with knowing him, realizing who we are in him, the children of God, the sheep of his flock, members of his family, and heirs to his kingdom, ushers us directly into his gates with thanksgiving. We can... We can enter his gates with thanksgiving by singing joyful worship songs like Oh Happy Day and How Great Is Our God or hymns such as To God Be the Glory and How Great Thou Art. Yellow, yellow. We can enter his gates with thanksgiving by calling to mind Bible verses like Psalm 106 and 1. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Like it says in Psalm 100, 1 and 2, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. We can lift aloud our voices and cry, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his soul. And one. We can bless the Lord at any time and at all times. His praise can continually be in our mouths. Let us encourage one another and come joyfully before the Lord, worshiping him with gladness and in song. As we do this, the enemy flees from us and our hearts are filled with hope and joy. In addition to the directive in Psalm 104 to give God thanks, it also tells us to bless his name. But how can we as people bless God? The word bless is a kind of adoration. When we bless God, it is an overflow of our affection and a reflection of God's amazing worth. At its root, the word bless means to speak words of adoration with bended knees. It paints a picture of a grateful and humble servant bowing before a king. 
It is both a posture of our hearts and a cry aloud about the state of our soul. We can gain insight into this idea of blessing God in Psalm 34, 1 through 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let us humble and hear, let the humble hear and be glad. Yeah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And Psalm 66, verses 8 and 16. Bless the Lord. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. The more we thank, praise, and bless God, the stronger God makes us as we fight this battle of life. God equips us with other ways to stand on his battlefield. Let us look at Ephesians 6 again. But first, 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 through 5 says, Indeed, we live as humans, but do not wage war according to human standards. For the weapons of our warfare is not merely human, but they have the divine power to destroy strongholds. We, de we destroy arguments and every proud obstacle raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to obey Christ. Earlier, I used Ephesians 6 and 12 to introduce us to spiritual warfare. Now let's go a little deeper. Verses 13 through 17 tell us, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to, to withstand on the evil day, and having prevailed against everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and belt your waist with truth, and put on the breastplate of righteousness, and lace up your sandals in preparation for the gospel of peace. Mm. With all of these, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Yes. Right. If we are going to stand on the battlefield for the Lord to fight the battle of spiritual warfare, we have to be equipped. Yes. We, have to, we have our powerful prayer our praise, our gratitude, and now we have the full armor of God. Yeah. Yeah. Stand on the battlefield in the belt in the belt of truth, which is Jesus continually seeking him. When our mind is waging war, it is crucial to look to the Holy Spirit. He will guide us to all truth. God's truth will always be around us and keeps everything intact. Stand on the battlefield in the blessed breastplate of righteousness, which is to continue to chase after God's goodness. All right. If we will keep near to that gospel which brings peace into our hearts, the peace that, that it brings will make us able to stand and bear unmoved any force that might be hurled at us. Stand on the battlefield with the shield of faith, which is putting our faith in front of us as if we were shielding a blow from the enemy. <laughs> We walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, yeah, we go yeah, forth yeah. in the armor of faith because we know that God is already there with us. All right. Stand on the battlefield in the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which are combined. If, because if we do not continually renew our minds, then we will be influenced by our own thoughts and desires. Let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes as they protect from the enemy's lies because he is the father of lies. Yeah. Sometimes it is hard to truly comprehend a threat that comes from things that are unseen. Hmm. However, God warns us that the threat of spiritual warfare is very real and to arm ourselves with what he has given us. Yeah. Yeah. Just as a good father protects his children, our Father God gives us all we need to stand against the enemy so that we may love one another and reveal Christ to those who do not know him. So to wrap this up, the full lyrics to the hymn number 390, which I paraphrased earlier, I am on the battlefield for my Lord. 
I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. Amen. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yellow. Yellow. I was alone and idle. Mm. I was a sinner too. Yeah. I heard a voice from heaven yeah. say, there is work to do. Yellow. I took the master's hand and I joined the Christian band. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yeah. I left my friends and kindred yeah. bound for the promised land. The grace of God upon me, the Bible in my hand. Yeah. In distant lands I tried, Christ, sinner, come to God. Yeah. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yeah. Now, when I met my Savior, I met him with a smile. He filled my holy spirit and owned me as his child. Around the throne of grace, he appoints my soul a place. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yeah. To be on the battlefield for the Lord means to go and make disciples and win souls to Christ. It also means to fight the battle of spiritual warfare. In order to win this battle, and we will win if we do not give up, in order to win, we must have powerful prayer, pray without ceasing and in all circumstances. We must give God praise and thanksgiving and be joyful while we do it. We we also must be equipped with the whole armor of God to fight off the schemes of the evil one. And these tools together, all these tools together will equip us to stand on the battlefield for the Lord and come out victorious to claim our place around God's throne of, threat, of grace. Amen. Do you have your equipment? Amen. <laughs> God equips us with everything we need to stand on his battlefield. The doors of the church are open. If there is anyone here who does not feel equipped to stand on the battlefield, fight the spiritual warfare, and come out in victory, please come forward. God wants everyone to be ready for whatever is thrown at you. Come to Jesus and receive your equipment. The doors of the church are open.